that you've had a chance to look at your personnel, look at the film from last year. Was there one consistent problem that the offense had last season? Uh, I don't. I don't know if I can put my my finger on that just by by looking at film. Um, you know, I think it's a lot of things. Uh, obviously, injuries, you know, uh, play a lot into that. The freshman quarterback having to, having to play. Uh, but, you know, not being here, you know, it's like I told those guys, that was last year. Uh, this is this year. You know, everybody's got a clean slate. Uh, we're judging things from this point uh, forward right now. And we've had five days of practice. I've, you know, I've been pleased uh, with the progress so far uh, by the guys. Uh, it's been slow progress, but I do think we've gotten better uh, every single day. Has there been one overarching theme that you want this offense to have, whether that's consistency or unpredictability? Or well, like well, well. Con, con, I mean, consistency is a, is a word that coach has been been preaching since day one uh, about being a consistent, you know, player. Every single day you step in the, in the building, and <laughs> offensive football is about being consistent, you know, play after play, doing your job. Um, you know, it's about execution, and the only way you execute is by being consistent. You know, every single day, and how you how you approach practice, how you handle the install, how you learn, how you learn from your mistakes, and uh, I've really, really been pleased uh, with that. Now we're having you know a handful of uh, mistakes every every single day. Uh, you know, we're not slowing down on install. We're continuing to install things, uh, and guys have picked it up pretty well. Uh, I've been really pleased with you know the line of scrimmage up front. Uh, you know, you've got the most experience you have out of any group uh, offensively. So, you know, those guys, I mean, I think there's eight guys back right now that have start, at least started a game. So there's a lot of experience up front and they're doing a, they're doing a nice job. And then, uh, you know, our quarterback has done a nice job of studying and preparing every day. Uh, you know, I've been pleased with him. You know, today was probably our, our worst day throwing and catching the ball. But uh, before today, I, I've been really, really pleased. Mike, people talk about identity. Teams need to have an identity. Offenses, do you think that? And if so, what kind of identity? Yeah, do you there's, have? There, that was one of the things that I said in our first meeting uh, to our offense. You know, we got to create identity, who who we are, and what we're going to be. And I think that identity comes, you know, through spring practice, through through your summer uh, workouts, and then fall camp. And you base your identity really, you know, around you know your your personnel and what you're going to be. But the one identity that doesn't matter whether we're playing three, four wides, two wides, you know, two tight ends, two backs, one back is uh, we want, we want to be tough. Um, and, 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 you know, mentally and physically tough. And, you know, I said that's going to be part of our identity. Now, as far as scheme, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know that identity yet. Uh, you know, there's going to be some, some guys that are going to come in uh, that are going to help shape that identity at skill positions. You know, two, two tight ends, uh, two more running backs, two more receivers that will help shape the identity of what we're going to be. And, it, you know, it's too early, you know, to tell. Right now we're, we're – we're, going to try to throw, you know, a lot at them, really everything, you know, that, that maybe we've done in the past or I've done in the past. Um, and then we'll figure out what we are when all the personnel gets in. Where has Ryan shown the most progress in the I, I would say his, his, his footwork. Um, he's done a really nice job of, of, of being on balance uh, in the pocket, trusting his protection. Uh, and I think, you know, that comes with understanding his protection understanding where the issues are and being able to sit in that pocket and, and be calm. Uh, he's been very, very accurate uh, up to this point today. I don't know the, don't know the numbers for today. Uh, you know, we, we had a, several drops and we had a few guys out, out today uh, with some, some nagging things. Uh, but I would say his footwork, his accuracy, and I've been real impressed with him, you know, in the meeting room. Um, how, sh how sharp he is, how smart he is, how, come how he comes in prepared uh, before the meetings, before we even go on the install. He's taken the time and looked at it. But uh, he has arm talent. Uh, you know, he's athletic enough. I wouldn't call him, you know, an athletic – uh, a dual threat quarterback, but he's athletic enough to move around the pocket and make some plays. With that, Mike, I mean, would you prefer that he be just a little mobile to, you know, just not be a statue back Well, there? I think that's, that's today's game. I mean, you can't have – you know, it's hard to play, you know, with your – statue back there unless you're just on top of everything and you know the offense like the back of your you know your hand uh, and able to execute at a high high level uh, but being able to move uh, helps you know avoid bad plays and uh, negative plays and you know it just you know 
sometimes it makes you a better coach when that guy can move around back there a little bit. Having gotten to know him, have you been able to conclude anything about how mentally tough he is given what he went through last year? Uh, no, we've we've talked a little bit about uh, you know you know the position you play, uh, and you know now you know you're the guy, and you know everybody's going to be looking at you, and they're always going to think about somebody behind you is is better than you are, uh, and you know you got to be one of the mentally toughest people on the team. Uh, you know your body language has always got to be good. You're the leader, you know, of the offense, and hopefully you know one of the leaders of the team. Uh, but that's you know that's something we're going to gain you know mental toughness through practice too. I coach them pretty hard, uh, so if they can handle practice, they'll be able to handle a game. In terms of that install, how much of an asset is Colin Hill kind of been, even though he can't play? Uh... Yeah, it's you know I know Colin's frustrated. Uh, they don't even let him come out of the training room. He's in there rehabbing the whole time. I asked him today. I said, "You ever going to watch practice?" He said, "They don't let me out." Mm -hmm. uh, but just you know in the meeting room, uh, listening to him uh, talk to guys. You know, I'll have a question about something that, you know, I might forgot forgot a little bit something I asked Colin and he, you know, we did it this way, coach. Uh, so he's been really good uh, about explaining things to those guys, you know, obviously in the meeting room and away from the meeting room. How will the quarterback competition change when he's healthy? Well, I think, you know, I think competition is, is, is a healthy thing to have. Uh, you know, I, I think our best, you know, position group right now offensively is our offensive line because we have the most competition there because uh, those guys are competing every day to stay, you know, with the first team. And, you know, I think you're just – you're going you're gonna to have, you know, guys going out there and know that you've got to execute at a high level at the quarterback position. Uh, you got to hit your targets, and if you want to, if you want to be a good football team, you got to have good quarterback play. Uh, so that's what I'm looking for. And you know, and you know, right now, right now, Ryan Helensky has had good quarterback play the first five days. I've been pleased with him. You know, we'll see when and when Colin gets healthy and gets out there. You know, what's gonna what's gonna happen with him? But uh, you know, right now, I mean, I'm a good quarterback play, and guys are gonna get an opportunity to compete. You guys are a little shorthanded at the running back spot, but what have you kind of been able to do there? Uh, well, uh, I've been pleased with uh, I've been pleased with Fenwick, uh, you know, a guy that hasn't played a lot around here. I think he's a guy that has, you know, embraced with open arms the clean slate uh, mindset. Uh, he's a big, good-looking guy, and he's he's running physical. He's shown some toughness in the in the competition blocking drills that Coach Muschamp puts him through. Um, offense versus defensive guys, uh, you know, and he's got you know he's got good hands, and he's a smart kid. Uh, been really really pleased with him, and then Marshawn Lloyd, I think he has a chance to be be, be a special back. Uh, he's very diligent uh, about how he approaches every day. He comes with the right mindset. He's sitting in Coach Bentley's meeting room 30 minutes before the other guys get there. He wants to learn. He wants to be ready. And, you know, there's good competition there. Wish we had more guys out there competing right now. Uh, but, you know, those guys are doing a good job. Mike, in your experience, how quickly can you tell the freshman running backs? Well, Fre uh, running back is, a, is pretty quick. You know, it's not one of the positions uh, – that it's hard to play as a freshman. You know, protections can be a little bit of an issue, uh, but you can do things as a play caller to protect a young back as far as protection. And you know, it it doesn't it doesn't take long. And I mean, he's going to play for us this year. <laughs> Have you come to that? Has anything you've experienced? And I'm thinking maybe no Sean. Marino. Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking before you asked it. You know, we were all wanted no Sean Marino to play, and uh, you know, coach was like, we're going to redshirt him, and we kept asking, and even the special team coach would ask every week, and uh, uh, and we had good backs. You know, we had you know Thomas Brown and Craig Lumpkin and Danny Ware. Uh, I think those were three. We might have had another one, and uh, you know, but he was he was ready to play as a freshman. And he ended up leaving in three years anyway, so we only got two out two out of him. Did that influence in the future how quickly you tried to get fresh? Well, I think, I think it might have influenced influenced Coach Coach Rick. Uh, you'd have to ask ask Coach Rick, but I mean, running back is a position that you you can tell pretty quick if you know if the guy's got it. Uh, and usually, you're not signing a running back to redshirt him, you know, because what should running backs be doing if they're not starting to tell? But they should be starting on special teams because they have that type of body. They ought to be physically enough, physical enough. Enough. Uh, they ought to be able to run and, and uh, go down and make plays or, or block and protect. And if they're not the bigger kind of running back, they ought to be one of your return guys. If they're not, then you probably signed the wrong guy if you're red shirt and a running back. Are you using Adam like you used him at Colorado State? Uh, we had uh, a little bit. Uh, we haven't got as much into the true eye. 
you know, formation in, you know, the insert, the lead zones type of stuff uh, that we did at, at Georgia. You know, he's been playing more than H back right here right now. What have you seen from your receiver group through these first five days of practice, and what would you like to see them improve? Uh, being more consistent, you know, being more consistent, and and you know, being able to being able to practice, you know, we we're we're you know, we're down down a few guys, and uh, the guy I have been pleased with is Xavier Leggett. Uh, you know, he's practiced every single day, showed toughness. Uh, he's a raw receiver. He's learning how to control his body right now, but he has a skill set that I think he can play in this league and be a productive guy. Uh, DK Joyner has shown toughness. He's learning how to play the position and how to run routes uh, and not be as robotic as, you know, when you're thinking about running the route and how to run it. I think he's going to get better as, as time goes on. Uh, you know, those two, those two guys, uh, you know, stick out to me the most. Who's a guy that can really stretch the field and be a downfield home run threat like Edwards was? Uh, I would think that, you know, would probably be 13 for us right now. Um, Shy is a guy that's shown, has shown speed, caught a long touchdown today, uh, which was good to see. You know, we've been working a lot of short passes and stuff, and we took a couple shots today and, and were to hit him over the top of the defense. Uh, he's got, got got some speed, but that's, you know, that's the thing, you know, that we need around here. We need some guys that can stretch the field in speed. Um, you know, so hopefully we'll, you know, we'll get it uh, with a couple of these guys come in uh, that we signed, and that's definitely, you know, one of our major focal points in recruiting is finding guys that can run. How would you describe a perfectly called Mike Bobo offensive game in terms of your the balance you like to see? Uh, I don't. Know. We, we win. Number one. Uh, number one is win. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know. You, you, your perfect game is you want to rush for over 200 and throw for over 300. You know, that's 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 a that's a, a really, really good game. You know, somebody asked me that. That's the first time we had a press conference here, uh, and I thought about it later. You know, we played Kentucky one year and didn't punt and went 10 for 10 on third down. You know, that was a pretty good game. Mm-hmm. Ryan said that he has some background taking snaps under center. How much do the other guys have experience in that, and, and, and what has that like been, been like working a little bit more of that? Side? Well, knock on wood, we haven't had a lot of fumbled snaps. Uh, you know, we've had some with the freshman center, and I don't think it's been an issue with our quarterback being able to get the, get the snap. Uh, it's just you know learning learning footwork and and some ball handling for some of the for some of the run front action has been the main focus with those guys but they they've done a good job with it you know we've probably been more in the center than we'll probably be um, during the season for this first part of five days just because of our depth at, at wide out really. What are the benefits of being under center? Uh, I think your play action is better under center. Uh, number one, you know, there are a lot of gun play actions that do a pretty good job, but they don't get the pull of the safeties like they do if you're under center uh, and you have an attached tight end. Uh, you know, that would be number one. You know, now the gun play action nowadays is really RPOs. You know, it's not really play action. It's, you know, either handed off or reading a back or reading a safety. Uh, but that, that, would be, that would be number one. Um, and for for me, it'd be play action. So the running backs vision and or angles affected by. Well, I think you're you're I think able to to you know you're able to attack really both sides of the line of scrimmage. Sometimes in gun, it's a little harder. You know now you will cut back and stuff, but I think it opens up the cut back more when you're under center. That's why you've seen a lot of people that in gun go to the pistol, you know, to give you know to be able to to hit it more downhill uh, you know when you're a gun you're offset i mean it's just not the i don't care what steps you use it's hard to hit the same track that you would under center so it might be something you did more based on the talents or specific capabilities of the running back it could yeah yeah there's there, there's no question um you know, uh, you, you do different things for different players uh, and, you know, different things for different quarterbacks, you know. Uh, you know, what they what they handled. Murray was better, you know, in the shotgun. You know, he was better in the shotgun and uh, seeing things spread out. Um, you know, so you've changed, you know, changed sometimes for different guys. Are you going to be in the press box or on the side? I plan on being on the pre- in, in the press box. How have you meshed so far with your, you know, other assistant coaches on uh, I think you know it's 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 been a really good mesh. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I came here was, you know, I have familiarity with Brian McClendon. Uh, I haven't coached him at Georgia, and then he coached with me for eight years. 
uh, Joe Cox, I had coached at Georgia and coached with me, you know, for five years at Colorado State. Uh, and then Thomas Brown was here, uh, you know, have been in this system. Uh, obviously, Thomas isn't isn't here, but Bobby has done a really nice job and picked on. Uh, I love the line coach, Eric, Eric Wolford. Uh, you know, we've been on the same page. And, you know, I've had to do probably less coaching to coaches than I did when I went to Colorado State. You know, there's a lot more coaching to coaches. If this is the system we're going to run, there was more familiarity on this staff than there was when I went to Colorado State offensively. Who's ripping it center right now? Uh, Eric Douglas, Hank Manos, uh, Trey. Is it Trey from Abbeville? Yeah. Trey, is it Jones? Trey Jones from Abbeville. Uh, and then uh, the, the guy, uh, Murphy from St. Thomas. So we've got a lot of them. One of the ones that's been mostly Hank and uh, Eric Douglas. What are you looking for at the center? Well, I think the center uh, is a guy that's got to be very, very smart. Uh, he's got to understand what we're doing. He sets the he sets the communication for the line of scrimmage in the run game and, and the pass game. And both of those guys have done done a nice job. We're probably asking them to do more communicating than they've done in the past. You know, we're probably getting it done a little slower than I would like right now. But I, we'll, we'll 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 figure it out and we'll get it. Uh, you know, we just we need more. Practice. What has the mix and rotation been like at the offensive tackle spots right now? Uh, you'd have to ask Coach Wolf. I don't really. I, I mean, they, there's different guys going in there. They all look. They're all of six six and huge. So, uh, I mean, Jazz has played some tackle. Uh, the junior college kid uh, that was from Kansas, uh, Moore from uh, Virginia. Uh, the left tackle. Uh, them two have been playing left tackle. Uh, Nichols. Uh, from in Charlotte, his right tackle, and then um, I'm trying to think one more. It's mainly been those most those three with the ones. Mainly those three. What what have you seen out of Luke? Anything he's done that surprised? Yeah, I, I, I've been really pleased with Luke. Uh, Luke is a him and Marshawn probably fall in the same category, being very conscientious. You know, want to learn, want to put themselves in a position to compete. Um, you know, Luke has, you know, has been accurate. Uh, I think two days ago practice, he was 11 out of 11 uh, at practice, which was, 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 was awesome. Hit every target. He made some nice throws today and completed some balls in third down. He's pulled the ball down a couple times uh, when, nobody, when everybody's been covered and, you know, had explosive runs. I think it's just, you know, his, his willingness to learn and master the offense is going to give him a chance to be, to be really really good because he has a he has a he has a skill set uh, you know that the other guys don't have. Now Jay has a skill set uh, to be able to run around too, but uh, Luke has a skill set to be able to run and make plays with his legs. Um, you know he doesn't have the probably the arm strength that Ryan has, but uh, he's been an accurate passer. He's he's been known as more of the athletic kind of guy. Is it nice to be able to talk about his accuracy first and foremost? Oh, yeah. Yeah. When we, well, this was number one. I said, we got to be accurate if we're going to play quarterback. You know, I don't care, you know, what what uh, you know what offense you're running. you got to be able to throw the ball nowadays unless you're, you know, running the, you know, the, the, the triple option like, you know, one of the academies are uh, – Georgia Tech used to, but if you're in any kind of offense, even if you're in a, you know, an R, you know, an RPO offense, you got to be able to throw it. You got to make accurate passes. I don't care if you can't be an accurate thrower. We're gonna have you won't be able to play quarterback. You mentioned Ryan's improvement in, in his footwork. It seemed like to me that he had a ways to go from from last year. Is that fair? And what does what what the better footwork enable a quarterback to do? Well, I, well, I think your foot your feet tell you you know uh, when to cut the ball loose. They tell you when to go to the next progression. They tell you when it's time to tuck the ball and run, or tuck the ball and get out of the pocket, or tuck the ball or throw the ball away. Your feet are a big indicator of of timing. Uh, and when your feet aren't right, usually leads to an inaccurate passer. Uh, now you can overcome it at times. There are times we're not always going to be on balance. So because of a rush, we got to move. But if, if when we're on balance, you know, and we're throwing things on time, we have a, our percentage of, of completing that ball goes up dr drastically. And I think you know, and that was the first conversation I had with him. I said, your your footwork's terrible. And I said, uh, I said a lot of that's to do. We don't know what's happening up front. You know, when somebody's coming, we're not, we don't understand the protection. So our feet are in bad place. Somebody's coming free on us. We don't understand that they're coming free. So, you know, we're taking, you know, some shots we probably shouldn't have. Um, you know, and he was a freshman last year and he got, you know, threw it 466 times. 
last year, and you know he got hit hit a lot, and that wears on a young guy. But I haven't seen a seen a guy that's lost his confidence or has become gun shy. I haven't seen that uh, from him, you know. And you know we got to do things to help him with protection, with the run game. Uh, I mean, we threw it 466 times last year, and I think we were only five yards per attempt. You know, uh, we got to be we got to be better at that, and that's not just him. That's everybody offensively doing their job, you know, in how we game plan and how we run the ball, how we find different ways to get completions, uh, and him being an accurate passer. You mentioned the younger receivers and tight ends who are coming in later this year. What did you see from those guys? I see athletic guys and those tight ends, you know. Uh, you know, uh, the kid from Alabama, Shaw, and then Bell from uh, Valdosta. I see two very, very athletic guys. Uh, the kid from Valdosta obviously played out wide and played some receiver. He's just naturally going to probably grow himself into a big wide out or a guy that will be able to move around at the tight end position. He's 220 pounds right now. He sent me a picture uh, of him the other day working out. He was coming off a knee injury, and he's back, you know, working out. And I'm excited to get him in here a guy that we'll be able to move around and, and hopefully create some mismatches. Uh, the kid from Alabama, I just think, uh, is a, just, you know, I, I think he's probably a little bit farther behind as far as learning how to play, you know, position and run routes because he hadn't been in a receiver position. But he is, has a huge, huge upside. I'm just hoping Coach Muschamp doesn't try to steal him and put him on defense. Uh, but uh, the two receivers, Rico, uh, is a guy that I, I, I watched on tape here when I got here, and then I watched, uh, you know, went his tape from when he was down in, in Savannah area, and I see a guy that can run and is big, uh, that I hopefully will be a guy that can hopefully take the top off a of defense for us, and then Caldwell, uh, the kid from Northwestern, you know, I knew about him at Colorado State. He kind of burst on the scene his, his senior year, and. You know, we thought we'd have a shot at him because really nobody was on him at, at the time. And then he kind of blew up late in the recruiting. But he's a 6'4 kid that can jump and can run, um, you know. And I think he's another long kid that will give, give us an opportunity. It's going to bring depth to that room because we, we need some depth at receiver. Talking about 5.5 yards per attempt. Is there numbers you'd like to see these offense get to? In terms I think you got to be you got to be close to you got to be around nine. You know, it used to be over 8.5 for us uh, an attempt. But you look at uh, uh, I know LSU and Alabama were over 10, uh, which is you know, that's that's um, that's unheard of. You know, all their numbers kind of when you look at your, you know, you want to set goals for your offense. And we ain't got into that yet. But you know, what led the league? You know, what led the league in this and third down percentage and scoring and yards per game. And, you know, you want to set these, you know, hey, we want to lead the league. Then that will give us a chance to compete for the, the conference. But, I mean, Alabama and LSU is way up here. And then everybody, you know, and, you know, Florida was probably more of an – more of an outlier, but uh, I mean, their their numbers were crazy. I mean, you got to complete over seventy percent of his passes in every single game. Uh, jeez, and not and throwing the ball downfield like he did, pretty impressive. Do you guys have anyone whose talent reminds you of uh, Dante Wright and someone you might be able to use in that kind of role you used him last year? Uh, Shy has that kind of a, kind of ability and, and speed. Uh, uh, Shy's probably faster uh, than da than Dante, uh, but we don't we don't have. Uh, we don't have that that guy right now. We're still trying to figure it out, really. Uh, you know, Shai's probably you know, our best deep threat. <laughs> you know, so I don't know. I'm be using him on all the speed sweeps too. So I, we have, it's a lot of things that we got to do, and hopefully we can find some guys uh, when we get our other guys in here that are going to help. And we might not have that element in our offense. Do you have a strong feeling one way or the other about pulling defensive linemen for specialty packages? I'm thinking Pickens and Birch, who both. Have experience. Yeah. Short well, I, I, I have. We did it uh, maybe once or twice at when I was at Georgia. I did not do it at Colorado State. I think if you got the guys on offense, uh, you don't you don't do it. Uh, you know. And, and, but and we have. I mean, we got 16 linemen right here, right now, in camp. And I think we got enough big bodies where you know we're going to be able to have. Now, if a guy's a runner. And it might be a little bit. It might be a little bit different. But as far as a blocker, is really the only one I've used them. So, you know, I don't see it happening right now. If, if third and short, fourth and short, South Carolina it seems like it's struggled in that area. What, what's the key to, to converting? Those? Well, it's a mindset. You know, our goal in third and short and fourth and short is going to be 100%. We got to get those. Uh, 
you know, obviously, you know, you can do things schematically that you know, puts yourself in position to be able to get a first. But, you know, one, it's getting your pads lower than them, coming off on the football, and the ball carrier's got to get – he's got to get it. He's got to go get it. Um, you know, and the number one thing is we don't want to run wasted plays. We don't want to run into bad looks. So we'll do things to hopefully run us in the right look, and we can't get whipped. Can't get whipped on third down, and then you got to be able to bring your own blocker as a back. All right, guys.